like um, i do sadhana you give result okay dev is like not okay <laughs> like when he say i build a story with you okay she'll say okay that's devi sadhana you can please shiva with doing some sacrifice penance and whatever whatever they say but you can only please devi with aesthetics but baba took me one day on a trip he said come i'll show you what's in an electron took me because he has anima siddhi and there was a whole world there and then it went even more deeper and then electrons when we were zoomed in this is made up of so many more particles and there's a universe inside that only and he like just you can zoom out just as you can zoom out i had learned to zoom out mm-hmm. get out of my body zoom out and see the whole universe mm-hmm. but he told me if you zoom in also it's infinite that was a revelation for me when men have a womb mm-hmm. it's just not in the form of a female womb there's a creative seed in us mm-hmm. in the testicles and learning how to orgasm without ejaculation is good so that's something you should play with because anyway you are masturbating everyone's doing it so instead of doing it uh, without a purpose try to make the purpose to be able to orgasm without ejaculation play with it understand it stop yourself before you ejaculate understand which nerves up try and see if you can fire those nerves up without actually ejaculating that's the work that men have to do like why is this knowledge on uh, hmm. devi sadhana and uh, the hiranyagarbh hmm. and why is it coming out now is there something special about the timing yeah 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 on a cosmic scale yeah i've been asking devi also like what do you want me to what do you want me to manifest e happens when we read great stories right mm. yeah. i mean your life is your story man your the best story you ever written is your life mm. i don't care what kind of author you are but whatever author you are the, if you're a, if you're a storyteller the best story that you can ever tell is your life mm. it's what bharatanatya shastra is for mm. it's really what it's for to live the best life Okay. So is it possible to like are you producing a translation on it already? Is it, it okay? Nanti Shastra no not yet but okay. uh, wherever relevant I will explain about it hmm. wherever we need to. Okay. But that's uh, something we can go into next but I would like people to first get an experience of a story and then break it down and then see what the story was like. I don't want you to interrupt your story with that. So I, I just want you to get in hmm. get in the lore. get and understand mahamaya's maya then you can make your maya better hmm and so we learn to write read and write you just copied what they were the sounds they were telling you and the symbols they were showing you on the board so what you just copied and you learn to read and write now hmm and now you can write anything yeah ah uh, so it's like that you start by learning the, it's like devi mahat uh, not devi mahatma but uh, devi bhagavatam is like um, alphabet you understand devi in her various forms now you can create more from it from this mm. base basis that you have you can create more they called adhara mm. uh, every adhyaya is an adhara okay there are 18 adhyayas so 18 adharas in so that's where devi uh, story becomes a base on which you can build uh, your story either by analogy mm mm-hmm. which is called upamana mm-hmm. or by inferences which you can make which is called mm-hmm. um you know anumana mm-hmm. or by certain proofs that you found in your life you'll be like ha ah, this concept i have always suspected when it is proven and you will get proofs which is called pramana mm-hmm. and you'll get the blessings of devi which blows and somebody really reads all her stuff with real bhakti mm-hmm. there will be a breeze that blows and its blessings that will come i'm not talking about a physical breeze i'm talking about a spiritual breeze of energy 
that starts to come in your life and that when you start tuning into that that's a nourishing and it is an ecosystem mm. a friendly energetic ecosystem for you sent by devi as a gift it just comes like that sometimes that's called shabra <clears throat> so these are the four sources of knowledge when you read a story mm-hmm. you can make an analogy out of it and apply it to your life mm-hmm. or you can make inferences out of that story and understand certain things mm-hmm. or you can get proof for a lot of things that you suspected with the story or you can just get bathed in the grace and understand wow where is this what is this creative womb and these creative stories where are they coming from can i tune in mm-hmm. and you tune in your own womb to that and then you start understanding right mm-hmm. yeah that's it so even men have a womb mm-hmm. it's just not in the form of a female womb there's a creative seed in us mm-hmm. in the testicles so it's there we have the equivalent of the eggs the ovaries sorry mm-hmm. which is the testicles the gonads right so thank you so much for that uh, understanding into how important the deep bhagavatam is and how deeply it goes for us to uh, like there's so much to learn mm. i mean there's a lot of depths indeed it's really great yep and yeah i think it resonates a lot like i asked about the safe space for women but obviously devi is not really looking for safety and all about safety at all so actually yeah devi is like if you want safety you don't trust me yeah right okay so yeah let's go to the next question uh the connection between what is the connection between the moon and the hiranyagarbha so i think we've already covered this but if that's well there are a lot of connections so the moon is like a indication of the cycle of devi herself <coughs> the moon is that shape it's it's uh it's that circular disk shape mm-hmm. which represents the f- feminine and the lo- the li- line is uh the shape that represents the ma- the masculine mm mm-hmm. and you'll see even our bodies are like that men's bodies are more straight mm-hmm. whereas women's bodies are more rounded and curved mm-hmm. so the moon is that roundness which wa- waxes and wanes mm. and shines really bright and becomes completely dark and shines really bright so that's the relationship even with your energy in your womb mm. you need not sync with the moon that's not necessary but mm. you understand it's a, it's its own moon it's its own cycle <coughs> you wouldn't go hunting on a on a amavasya mm. a new moon because you don't know from which side the leopard's going to attack you but on a full moon you might go hunting mm-hmm. for example mm-hmm. that brightness that illumination is what we're looking for mm-hmm. work when it's illuminated do stuff when it's everything's illuminated when it's fully dark then you're like just stumbling through trying to find your way you'll enjoy yourself you hurt yourself doing that mm. long term it's really bad yeah even one cycle is so bad if you go and work during your period and you come back you're like oh my god i hate my life yeah 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 that's kind of been there done that <laughs> yeah yeah i'm glad you're not doing it anymore yeah And it's a choice, right? It was a hard choice for you also, just as it's going to be for anybody else. Mm-hmm. But it's a, that's that's what we came to do: difficult things. We didn't come here to do easy things. Mm-hmm. I mean, I don't know what's easy about trudging through work when you have your period. But people find the decision to let go of such toxic work environments very difficult because they're addicted to money. Mm-hmm. They don't believe that money is a force that will come to them when they put out something into the world that is valuable. they don't believe this at all they're like hey, how can it be so simple to get money mm-hmm. you have to cheat kill and murder and rape people then only you'll get money mm-hmm. this is what people think they don't understand that just genuinely putting out value in the world will make you a lot of money this is what happened to me like last night at 4 o'clock i sat down not 4 o'clock at 6 o'clock i was sitting down to sleep you know i'm already like sleepy you know and mail batteries out So I'm like, yeah, it's time. I was thinking, should I go get some moonlight or should I just sleep? I'm, I'm in that kind of phase, and people started messaging me like a flood. And I, 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 <clears throat> I sold seeds in my challenge for thirty thousand rupees each. I sold four seeds, and I made one point two lakhs yesterday in just like one one hour twenty five minutes or something like that. 
in that range you know that's how easy it is to make money and this is just one example i mean i'm not even talking about the money you can make work for you by investing it in other stuff so i invested a little money into uh, some very basic startups but they they scalable and they're good and they're all working you know so that's like uh, truly passive income almost it's almost i say almost because they still come to me and ask some questions but they're like big and quality questions they come to me with big problems mm-hmm. all the small problems they can solve themselves those entrepreneurs but i'm there to mentor them and for that i take a, a part of their company and these are my students long term students who i i start stuff with so that's also an investment to make money work for you mm-hmm. if you're really being of value in the world money will pour on your head if it's not pouring on your head you're not being of value in this world you're underselling yourself you're selling your time to somebody for very less mm-hmm. very less amount that is so stupid thing to do such a stupid thing to do okay you have to learn how to put your value out in the world but you have to know who you are first that's why it always starts with stories Mm. Uh, thank you so much for going into that depth about it um so yeah we have to understand that the women's own womb is also like the womb and sink in right that's mm-hmm. one of the mm-hmm. uh, yes okay so cycles mm-hmm. be aware of your cycles mm-hmm. So uh, why is it important for women to heal themselves mm. and how do some of these practices that relate to devi sadhana um, is that the one i'm not sure yeah. uh, take it to the next level of this healing yeah i mean hiranyagarbha practices will do that because the first thing that i insist everyone do and that's what i want you to teach them is to get in tune with your cycles <coughs> once that's done then you know you the rest of the lessons are all embedded in the devi puran okay mm-hmm. so you'll 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 get that training you know that's what you need to do you need to uh, then you, you you use it it's like a lego box i'm telling you you can build whatever you want with it and i'll guide you mm-hmm. when you get there but you start with fixing your hormonal rhythm mm-hmm. your feminine cycles start there mm-hmm. get it okay with because everybody's out of cycle what to teach nothing will go in your head Mm. I can't teach any greatness when you don't even have energy because you've been living in a long, wrong cycle. How can I teach? You know, get into the right cycle and then I'll teach you. There's lots of things to learn. From the lessons are unlimited, 18,000 verses. It's unlimited stuff there. I can give you 18,000 lessons if I want to. Just we'll start with the first chapter and you'll learn so much. Yeah. There's so much to learn. I mean, we'll do podcasts and stuff, but when when we do with students, it'll be with the techniques that are embedded. I'm not uh, allowed to teach that. I'm forbidden to teach that in public. Mm-hmm. But I'll definitely tell you the story and some little bit of juice on the story. But the real secret yogic techniques, if you learn, that's good. You just need that one thing. It's all embedded in. I don't even have to make syllabus, man. Our ancestors are made and gone. I don't have to even like. I don't have to use my brain. Actually, I do, but not to create the syllabus. that's already there that's very ancient it's already there it's yuga zone it was written by ved vyasa so mm. yes okay thank you mm. so yeah i was going to go to that devi sadhana is as ancient as humanity mm. and what are the differences between this sadhana and the other forms of sadhana well in devi sadhana it's more about uh, story we focus a lot on story mm. another sadhana we're doing atm machines mm. like um, i do sadhana you give result okay devi is like not okay <laughs> like when you say i build a story with you okay she'll say okay that's devi sadhana mm. you can please shiva with doing some sacrifice penance and whatever whatever they say but you can only please devi with aesthetics you can't please devi if you're not planning to be beautiful you should blow her mind you should become beautiful inside by listening to her stories and making your own version and stand on her shoulders and make something and she's like whoa nice and she gets interested okay that's devi sadhana 
But every other sadhana is just doing some technique and over and over like an ATM machine, okay? You put in the cord and then you press it and then a cash comes out. Then put the cord and you press it and the cash comes out. Where is it coming out of? I don't care. My father's bank account, Shiva's bank account. So that's what people think. But what's your relationship with God is my question to all these people, right? You want to build a relationship with God, build something with her. First understand her story, what she wanted to convey to you in the Devi Bhagavatam. And then take it from there. That's really what you need to do. Mm-hmm. There are many more. Okay, there's Markandeya Puran. If you start exploring, then if you go the Puranic route, there's really lots to learn. Mm. Uh, but, uh, you know, we're going to look into the yoga hidden in it. Ha, ah, that's the juice. No, you can call this juicy yoga. <laughs> ah. Yeah, it's stories and it's the, and the story you, and, and the text itself. And, and... Uh, Implementation in your own, own life. Yeah. Because that's what is important. Mm-hmm. Like, how can you be a goddess in your own life? That's a question. Mm-hmm. No course answers this question. Mm-hmm. Uh, they can't. They can only say, you're a goddess, you're a goddess, you're a goddess. What does it mean? What powers do you have? Can't even control your emotions because you're fully out of your cycle. Yeah. What goddess? Somebody's like, Guruji, I have been abused by my parents and I have been abused by my boyfriend. And I've been shown no value, and uh, I I feel like I'm in a toxic relationship, and so we broke up, and now he won't he blocked me, he's not talking to me, but I still want him. I'm like, yeah, Devi's going to be so turned on by this wonderful story of yours. Yeah, lovely. That's why you're getting recycled like a trash, and you're also feeling I'm trash when you say this. So how about you fix it, you know? Then I gave her a Kriya. She did it. She did the Kriya. Next day morning, she's fully all right. She'd made some sad song for him also. She sent me the link to the song. Like, I should listen to it and be sad also. I, I said, it's really sad. And I sent her some of my music. Like, listen to some happy music. You know? So anyway, that's good. So she learned, you know? She kind of figured it out. She transferred the Dakshina for the lesson. And uh, now she's doing great. Like I'm like, okay, oh, how's your urge to be anath? I asked her. This is how I talk to people. And she's like, uh, can't Guruji. I don't feel anath. No. Anath says anath. Mm. With one kriya. That's the power of stories. Mm-hmm. Yes. Okay. Yeah, so... I wanted to ask, how does one actually connect with uh, Devi? What are the different ways to do that? And how, mm. how can a practitioner do it? Mm. Now, first thing is to stop working on a male cycle as a woman. Stop that. <coughs> mm-hmm. You know, as a man, it was... I, I don't have to stop my male cycles, because I'm a man. But I, I connect to Devi by being Maya. Understanding that that's my only role here. There's a creation to be made. I have to like invite people into my Maya. And they have to invite me into their Maya. And we have to agree on things. Mm-hmm. Like that's the joy. That's how we really worship Devi. You create a story. Mm-hmm. The first thing you do, like... Devi is not an ATM machine, I'm trying to tell you. Mm-hmm. That a mantra kiya, iska paat kiya, itne bar. Devi is not pleased by all that stuff. No. Mm-hmm. Gayatri Mantra ka itna bar jab kiya. Gayatri Devi is also Devi only. She's not going to be happy with that. What's the story? Do you know her story? Okay. Who is the Devi of Gayatri Mantra? Oh, I don't know. It's Gayatri Devi. What's her story? Oh, she has five faces. They don't know. So that's why stories are very important. When you relate to that story, then you know how you will behave? You'll behave differently. Okay. So like that, if you don't know the story behind the mantra, where it came out of, what is it saying, what's the story of the God? Mahamrityanjaya mantra, what do you know about Mahamrityanjaya? Do you know his dhyan? What does he look like? Why does he have that? What's his story, how he ended up like that? They have to know all that. That's when, that's when you can really worship Devi or Deva or anyone. Mm. Yeah, but people are full of hacks. Hacks. You should call this Wombax. Wombax. Golden Wombax. <laughs> then people will watch. Yeah. <laughs>
doesn't sound aesthetic at all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Devi will not come to that <laughs> podcast. <laughs> She will not visit. Yeah. So uh, I wanted to ask about. Yeah, how are the uh, different shaktis, the sthula and the sushma uh, shakti, connected to the Hiranyagarbha? What's the relationship between them? it's uh, it is like they connected uh, by a river okay there is a river that roars between the sthula and the sukshma okay. so sthula is what sthula means the gross matter that you can feel like a stone or a stick mm-hmm. or if i splash water on my face i can really feel it that is sthula experience mm-hmm. of devi that's also devi everything is like energy mm-hmm. at the end of the day everything is just photons and electrons and that's it gravitons and whatever tons of little, little little particles but baba took me one day on a trip he said come i'll show you what's in an electron and took me because he has anima siddhi and there was a whole world there and then it went even more deeper and then electrons when we zoomed in this is made up of so many more particles and there's a universe inside that only and he like just you can zoom out just as you can zoom out i had learned to zoom out mm-hmm. get out of my body zoom out and see the whole universe mm-hmm. but he told me if you zoom in also it's infinite that was a revelation for me yeah i was like wow you could zoom in and there's no end to it but my physics book ends here is like ha huh, throw it let's go you know that's devi how much you want to move through her tunnel <laughs> she'll make more tunnels for you That's the womb. It's an infinite tunnel. You don't know where it, where, what, wow. Here in your garba, you're in it, and you're cared for by it. There is karuna from Devi. She feels indebted to help you for creating you. She wants you to win, but here you are, brought into Gandhi ji history. We were slaves. Gandhi ji liberated us. After that, my parents met each other. on a website and now i am born that good history very good history so good history what are you going to do with this story let what anumana can you do from it inferences that you can make ha huh, so we are slaves that means we can't really do much and then so we have to marry whoever their our parents choose okay fine and now there's technology to do it so it's really fast and then uh, okay okay <laughs> and then what's the other inference i can make um, nobody's having any fun yeah. this the inferences that you can learn life is not fun this is what you can learn okay those are not the lessons to learn that's not that's not what you'll apply in what can you apply from this there's nothing there okay then what about uh, upamana analogy you take the same analogy to your job i don't have any choice i have to do what the boss says even if it causes me stress and come back home i have to do what my spouse says even if it causes me stress i have to do what the doctor says even if it causes me stress instead of relieving the stress that i came to him with you want stress relief you go to chiropractor i will give you medication medication is meditation that's why it's called a drugs let me drug you now and he'll drug you okay and he'll come back from the druggist and then you'll eat the drugs and then you'll be like you're losing life force right you're leaking energy because mm-hmm. you have only stress no agreement your maya is getting shorter and shorter and smaller and smaller and toes like your balloon is so empty what is this itihasa we had a better history no devi stories that's yeah. why everyone desperately needs them I hope I'm establishing a need for Devi stories. Yes, we definitely need them. Okay, good. <coughs> okay. Yeah, the is there a link between the Pancha Mahabhutas and hmm. the Hiranyagarbha? Hmm. Yes. The Hiranyagarbha itself is made up of Pancha Mahabhutas. Hmm. Yes. They yeah. come out of it. I mean, they are it. They come out of it. Yeah. The sky and the earth and first the earth and sky first the sky comes and from the sky comes the earth 
from the earth comes the water, from the sky comes the wind. And then when the wind and the water interact, it becomes fire, lightning. And that's the exchange of energy between the earth and earth sends electrical water to the sky. Sky sends that electricity back. <laughs> yeah. Clouds are electrically charged water. There are four states of water. Solid, liquid, gas and electrically charged. That's clouds. You can make clouds in a lab yeah. if you electrically charge water. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's how it's supposed to be in your body. You're supposed to feel like a cloud yeah. when you're 65% water. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but people don't feel like clouds, you know. But you do because you started the meditation. Mm-hmm. Huh? You can heal others also if you have that energy. Mm-hmm. I taught you and you were able to heal my shoulder that was bad from like five years, six years, I don't know, eight years, whatever. Mm-hmm. And it got fixed now. Yeah. That's also Devi's handicaps. She gives you like, take this. You know, like one more, okay, fine. And then you take it and you keep going, right? So, when you become a Garud, mm-hmm. Lakshmi sits on you. Or you become an owl. Mm. Lakshmi sits on you. Mm-hmm. These are two different sadhanas. It is Garuda sadhana and Uluka sadhana. It's two different sadhanas. That's what I've done to get Devi to sit on my shoulders. I've got an owl here, I've got a Garud here. Mm-hmm. And I take her on my shoulders. Okay. What kind of story is this? One that makes Devi happy. And I'm like, let's soar, let's go. I'm able to do that. I've become so strong to do that because I'm like, come, give your pressure to me. I'll take it. Yeah, the owl represents that, uh, is it like the opposite of wisdom? Is that representing it or something else? Wisdom is the western interpretation of owl, wise owl. Yeah, it's, it's the opposite of wisdom. For us, owl is silence. Oh. The eagle is a squawking, squawking animal, no? Mm-hmm. Screams as its prey. <coughs> then it comes at the prey. But the owl, you won't even hear it. <laughs> It shows Devi's two phases, the violence and the silence. Hmm. Yeah. The Shanta and the Raudra. So that's the river which separates Thula and Sukshma. Hmm. The river of Raudra. You have to go and destroy everything that is not making you fabulous. That Raudra has to be there. There is a river called Maharaudra flowing between Sthula and Sukshma. Mm. If you want to cross it, you have to please Maharaudri. Then she'll let you go. Then only she'll give you subtle visions. People don't even know who's Maharaudri. Mm. They have no idea. I don't know. You learn this from a guru, you know. It's there inside the Purans also, but it's hidden. Simply reading the story won't help. Mm-hmm. You have to find all these hidden things, mm-hmm. then you'll know. Okay. Oh, yes, what are the... So my next question is on how or to what... What are the different responsibilities that a woman has Hmm. Uh, since she is endowed with the special powers of the womb and this connection to Devi. What are the women's responsibilities? It's nothing like responsibilities, it's only story. What to do? Responsibility is what to do. What to do? If you're confused about what to do, you don't know who you are. So, first figure out who you are, what to do will become clear. What to do is obvious when you know who you are. Hmm. Hmm. Very powerful, no? Understand it. Otherwise, you'll need to be told what to do, what to do, what to do, what to do. No, please, this is not Islam or Christianity where they have ten commandments and haram. We don't have any of that in Sanatan. We expect you to know who you are. We don't expect you to be so self-unaware. If you know who you are, what to do is obvious. That's why there are no instructions on what to do. Hmm. No rules. It's obvious that you have to do certain things. 
It's obvious. Like, I have this, I'm swinging this all around, but I'm very careful not to hit your face, right? Yeah. Or these mics. Huh. So what to do is easy when you know who you are. Your freedom of movement is because of who you are. I'm a swordsman. I don't miss. I can come at your knees and not stop right there without whacking you. <laughs> has to punch people <laughs> touch their nose and go back and they know i touched their nose but i didn't hurt them hmm means like should i push the next one one inch more and they're like no <laughs> because it didn't see the hand coming <laughs> okay this because i know who i am at that point i feel like i'm a warrior i have complete control over my muscles i can do whatever i want to do so i can stop you there i mean i feel like like i'm a, a divine warrior you know when you that's who you are so then your actions are are limited automatically by what's right and wrong and you should know that having your powers no i'm going and telling people killing is wrong he doesn't have the capacity to kill anyone how will he ha- what's the use telling him killing is wrong that advice is res- uh, relevant only for someone who can kill so first when you have the capacity to kill then comes the ethics of whom should you kill and it becomes obvious depending on who you are who is it okay to attack who is it what is it okay to break down all these answers will come from who you are what's your story man who you are is what's your story what's the story you tell about yourself is who you are everyone tells a sad story about themselves oh my god i hear it all the all day oh my god i need a break that's why i'm telling devi stories God, you turn on the music on Spotify, everybody's crying, just crying. <laughs> They're singing about Krishna and crying. Krishna ni bega ni baro bega ni baro. Krishna will run. he won't beg on a barrow he will say traffic jam sorry he's not going to come <laughs> he won't throw one more punk also at you nothing you'll get you have to have joy in your life okay this god is not going to come like, why does god you think about it man i asked kali one day how you listen to everyone's cranks like i don't listen Like you don't listen. She's like no, I don't listen. Now I just ask you for all these things. She's like no, I don't listen. Like what are you going to listen to? What are you going to listen to? Said, so, make a Maya that's worthy enough that I can come in. Then I'll listen to you. Till then, do what you want. How you have no idea who I am. You have no idea who you are. You have no idea what you're doing here. Why should I listen to you? Die. That's Kali. You, I, I'm telling you, God is tired of everyone's ATM approach. Hmm. मैंने साधना किया तो ने रिजल्ट दिया मैंने किया पूजा तो ने दिया रिजल्ट like this. Not good. no atm relationships put the code and put the card and money comes out this is what people want that's what that's the spirituality they want man dude you talking with a high level spiritual being how should you be hmm. how do you turn out over there in what way do you turn out your best of course your best nothing less than your best will do ask me i bring your best game to your life Ask yourself, are you bringing your best game to your life? Ask me, and I'll say yes, my best game. If it gets any better than this, they'll write a puran about me. Mm. That's what I want to bring. Mm. Yeah, I wanted to ask about uh, since there are no responsibilities as such, it kind of makes this question not so. It kind of makes it redundant because. Mm. uh it was about who can support women in uh, you know meeting these responsibilities but if there are no such responsibilities it's all a game and it's all yeah, playful yeah, so yeah, yeah. 
it doesn't really yeah, please decide who you are and what's your story that's your responsibility decide your story then mm-hmm. what to do automatically follows mm. no yeah your only responsibility is to know who you are what you're going to be in the story what is what is the character what is the role you're playing in this story that you're now creating mm-hmm. it's so hard question for people to, such a hard question for people to answer because it's so caught up in lack of a good story hmm. that's why the puranas exist mm. i easily found out who i am by reading the puranas mm. ah. the moment i read the 18 ma purana i knew who i am who i want to be what my heart sings for what turns me on i knew mm. you read devi bhagavatam only you'll know who you want to be Your brain is like the super AI. It takes all the stories and creates a new story according to your keywords. <laughs> no keywords needed also according to your feelings. Mm-hmm. Yes. Question my next question is about uh, the role of men with respect to the Hiranyagarbha. I wanted mm. to ask this because of our some of our male listeners mm. would like to definitely hear. I mean it's 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 important to like you don't have to do this thing of following female cycles but you have to follow your male cycles properly and then also if you have some access to some good stories everything i said is relevant for both a man and a woman men have to be very careful about losing uh, uh their virya virya is said to reside in the semen and the sperm when you throw it out of your body then uh, you lose that energy and you can clearly feel the difference you know that's why no fap is a big thing but no fap is not good learning to control ejaculation is good and learning how to orgasm without ejaculation is good so that's something you should play with because anyway you are masturbating everyone's doing it so instead of doing it uh, without a purpose try to make the purpose to be able to orgasm without ejaculation play with it understand it stop yourself before you ejaculate understand what nerves up trying right? see if you can fire those nerves out without actually ejaculating that's the work that men have to do so that they're able to have continence otherwise it keeps like losing virya every time and it's okay to ejaculate if you're a young man you can ejaculate four times in a month it's no problem once a week <coughs> as you get older like me you should bring it down and that will like increase your energy like anything when you come down when you're able to do only two ejaculations a month your energy will be some other level for a man men just lose energy in ejaculation that's a problem women ejaculating is no problem but men ejaculating is a problem mm. so that's why if they once they're out they can't like reload for un- until 8 hours of sleep then only they can reload so if you don't want to be constantly like uh not pleasing your woman then you have to learn how to not ejaculate and how to keep going and take a break and then keep going keep going just don't go through everything out it even makes sex really bad for the woman because uh, your energy runs out so so your sexual energy runs out you know so men sexual energy is all over the place it's just running out like anything they they can't even get an erection without porn they're not able to mm-hmm. you should be able to think yourself into an erection that's how much of virya you should have in your body okay so if you lost the ability to think yourself into an erection that means you've already made damages to that equipment and you need to make corrective action by figuring out how to not ejaculate it's so important for men and you'll see the difference what i'm saying a lot of boxers and big martial artists are celibate uh, they don't have sex even and they don't even masturbate they're doing no fap but even that bad way of doing it is benefiting them if you did it the right way you'd have a lot of energy for men so that's that's the biggest place where i see men draining their energy masturbation and ejaculation masturbation is not the problem ejaculation is in fact you should practice masturbation in order to master ejaculation but now you're practicing it to relieve stress and feel better that's not a reason to practice it practice it to get powerful 
<laughs> but that goes for both men and women. You, you, you have to, you have to give your sexual energy, uh, raise it in your body, play with it, make it get bigger and bigger and bigger. And that's when you do sexy things, amazing things, juicy things. Mm -hmm. No? Otherwise you do some niras, niras things, you know. I'm seeing all the music and all the stories nowadays and it's like, <coughs> why did Bharata write Natya Shastra? So that you blokes could read it, but you don't. Okay. Hmm. So, the next question is about the role of uh, death and rebirth hmm. with respect to the Hiranyagarbha. Hmm. See, rebirth is just you losing energy. You don't die. You don't ever die. It's just the body that dies. So, understand it as when energy goes, the body will go. Then you'll have to rebuild energy again. You need the grace of Devi. You need a Guru's grace. You need a Kal Guru's grace to raise your energy again. And then you're born again. When you raise your energy, you'll come back into the world of the living. If you raise your energy somewhere, you'll go to Swarg Lok. Raise your energy somewhere, you'll go to the next Lok. There are so many Loks above Earth also. But Earth is the place where you can take the maximum pressure and also get the maximum pleasure. So, <laughs> this is why even the gods want to be born here. You got it quite by chance, you know. Somebody's grace, then you get a human birth. Some Kalgaru blesses you with a human birth. Most people have not earned a human birth. That's why they don't value it. But those who have earned a human birth will value it, okay? It doesn't matter. You can start valuing it and then earn your human birth. Now, by being a human, finally. No? Great idea. Everybody try. Yeah, that's uh, really interesting. <coughs> yeah, it takes a lot to come to human birth. The Bhagavad Gita says that some 800, 8 lakh, no, 3 Yeah, lakh, eight, 8 lakh, no, what is it? 84,000 yonis or 8 uh, lakh, 40,000 yonis, I have yeah. no idea. You can't really do that number because nature keeps making new, spe new species. Hmm. It's just a figure of speech. That many yonis. Okay. Right. Yeah, then there's a really interesting question about how, like, why is this knowledge on uh, hmm. Devi Sadhana and uh, the Hiranyagarb, hmm. and why is it coming out now? Is there something special about the timing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. On a cosmic scale? Yeah, I've been asking Devi also, like, what do you want me to? What do you want me to manifest? She said, this is the time that I'm coming to the earth. I'm coming. She's, she told me that she's going to take an avatar. I got this uh, in one of my astral travels. Uh, I ended up, uh, actually quite unintentionally, I ended up in the presence of Balatri Prasundari. There was so much celebration. It was because she was going to take birth on earth. And then she said, will you teach yoga? And I'm like, there's so much in that that I could understand that uh, I came here and started teaching yoga. But she said, will you teach yoga? I couldn't say no to her. She's so beautiful, I couldn't say no. And she was just a child. Imagine her as a woman, oh my God. She's going to be like so beautiful and so good as a human. So there is preparation for Devi to come as an avatar. There is definitely something afoot. I mean, it's not something that I'm allowed to, to talk about much. Mm -hmm. Definitely Devi is coming. Okay. Thank you so much for sharing all that knowledge. And uh, thank you so much for joining us again today, Guru Pashupati. That was uh, really... My pleasure. That was really um, insightful in so many ways. And I'm sure our... The people who are listening are going to really find some gems everywhere. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for asking those cool questions because that's a question on people's mind. So good. I hope I hope it helped everyone. Let us know in the comments, okay? Because then we don't know what to do next until you tell us what's going on. How did it affect you? How did how did it touch you? Did you learn anything? Just talk. If you sit without communication, Devi will give you. If you liked it and you didn't communicate, no? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that means what are you here for? Play the game. Okay? Yeah. Good.
So yes, if you want to get it, uh, in a conversation, if you have a thought about this and anything that was spoken about uh, in t- the today's episode, then you are you know welcome to get in touch. Yes, um, questions are most welcome. We'll try and answer them in our next podcast. So you can yes. make our job easy. Just ask questions. Yeah. Great. Yep. Namaste. Thank you for watching the final part of the series on the golden womb. This has been a really great experience for me to learn about what you all want to hear because of your overwhelming response in the comment section on the episodes on the Devi Bhagavatam. So we are very happy to produce the stories of Devi Bhagavatam in this podcast as well. Guruji has agreed and he will be sharing those stories in the upcoming episodes. So stay tuned for that. Uh, the next series is called The Attributes of Devi and they are going to cover topics and questions about the Dasha Mahavidyas, the gifts that Devi has given women and the three gunas, Sattvic, Tamasic and the Rajasic Guna. It's a privilege for me to bring this knowledge to you from Guruji and if you really like this podcast, stay tuned, subscribe to our channel and click on the notifications icon to hear about the next episode. Namaste.